Charles. Oh, oh, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're loud as fuck too. <laughs> I am. That's good. I'll just back you down a little bit so we're at the same length a little bit. Because I, oh. I finally adjusted my microphone a little bit so the decibels aren't like having it have this constant crinkling in the background. Uh, okay. Also, do you like this sweet ass graphic I made for it when we're we're podcasting? Yeah, I'm look I'm looking at it right now. I, I like the sunglasses. I like how they're like way higher quality than the pixel art. <laughs> yeah, well, you can only expand an image so much before it's fucked. <laughs> yeah, 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 I I know. I've worked in Photoshop plenty. So. Yeah, you understand the struggles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> so, welcome everybody to the first episode of the Twosome Gruesome Pod. Which is here by? Do you, don't you mean? Don't you mean gruesome twosome? That's what I said. Did I said do some. You said you no. You said twosome gruesome. Fuck hard at it. Uh, so anyway, guys, <laughs> uh, welcome to the first episode of the gruesome twosome pod, which was here by super popular demand because everybody requested it. Everyone who has ever ran into me and Yearn has asked for this moment. I don't. I don't know if that's true. No, it's not at all. Uh, no. <laughs> Mofo Matt saying, let's go. Official Emmy Saint saying, good job. Again, this isn't, we're going to interact with the chat a little bit, but it's not going to be too interactive. So if you feel like we're ignoring you, we are, but it's not because we just like you. <laughs> it's for the sheer fact that it's supposed to be a back and forth and we'll take questions when we open it up to it. At least yeah. that's what I decided kind of right here, right now on the fly. Um, yeah. That's how this generally has been going. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> when we start any co op stream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, what's up? I'm kind of glad we're doing this. I actually told a story earlier because uh, I did a podcast right before this with Captain Mighty Pants. Oh yeah, and respect my beard as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they're asking like about like me and you and our Twitch channels and how we came to like co-streaming together and stuff like that. And I was like, like ever since I started Twitch and doing that, and then Yearn got involved on one of my first co-op streams. Like he started doing it as well, and we've always just been like, well, why wouldn't we do it together? And like. Ever since I've met Yearn, when we're around each other, it's like a mandated thing of either, like, we're together, we amplify each other by a shit ton, and either people love it, or th we have to be separated from the common populace. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not wrong. I yeah. mean, like, in, in general, though, like, people don't, like, get super annoyed, or at least not right away. <laughs> it takes yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit, but, yeah. Yeah, because I told that you. It, yeah. I told a story about the first time. I didn't tell the full story. I told it the other day, but like the Tim story where like we annoyed him for seven hours on a bus or van or whatever. Yeah, yeah and the nine seater. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, WXW, the company, just whenever we would travel together, always separated us from everyone. Yeah, they put they put us in like ring trucks and stuff. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. What you're... <laughs> but then like the counter to that story is uh, LSG and Shahima Lee driving with us one day, being like, "Man, you guys are great," and we're like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Everybody hates us. Yeah, like you guys should be so annoyed. You're lesser people for finding us amusing. Yeah, and that goes to everyone listening to this right now. No, I don't think I don't think that's true. Oh shit! I just got an alert, but my alerts are not set up to be seen. Fuck! I forgot that that would be a thing during this. Oh, Mofo, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Oh yeah. Dude, that's that's uh, so Mofo Matt. Yeah, I've known for ages. I knew him before um, before I even started wrestling. Like really? Before I even started started wrestling training. Yeah, because I used to be like on Twitter as a wrestling fan, <laughs> and that's how I like met him. I, so so, so that, I want to discuss that for a second because for an individual <laughs> that is so super against like wrestling Twitter and all that kind of stuff and the bullshit that's involved <laughs> for it, you were like a wrestling fan fanboy yeah, yeah 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 please explain what do you mean please explain i think it's I, pretty self-explanatory so, yeah but so what were you doing? i you I, like... I really like wrestling so i went on twitter and then i found out people also like wrestling there so i started tweeting about wrestling <laughs> <laughs> what's there what's there to be explained i just like were you one of the people who would like watch the show and then be like oh they should have done this they should have booked this this way so blah 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 no, I was usually not like that, you know, or because it was like, I don't know, like, I don't see the point of that. And I think like, even then I was, I was still like, uh, in my head, it was like, well, I don't really you know. I'm still just a fan. So I don't know any better than them. 
Yeah. You know, so it's like I can enjoy things and I cannot enjoy things. Like I can dislike stuff, but I'm not going to sit around and say like they should have done this. You know, like I've never really done that. You just don't even necessarily do that now, to be honest. Yeah, true. Like you're still, <laughs> you're still really good about that. Like <laughs> even if you would know better than one of the people that made a shit decision, you wouldn't be like, well, I mean, you're fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. Like I, I feel like it's not. It's not in my position to say that. Yeah, you know what I mean, did I ever tell you the story about how Facebook got me in trouble when I first started training in wrestling? <laughs> no, I know. I feel that. like this was a very prominent part of my first several months in wrestling, but that was like 11 years ago. So it's not like I give a fuck now, but yeah. Um, so a week or two into training, they gave me my like first match to, uh, at like the training school for like a little free Friday night practice session. Cause that's what they had to call it or else they would have to get the athletic commission there and they weren't paying those fees. Uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> so I actually left my uncle's funeral early to go and have my first match. Uh, and I got there and I had a match and they like gave me a cool position and kind of built me up a little bit and I felt really cool about it. So I put on Facebook like, Hey, like I had my debut match tonight, you know, I don't know what they have in store for me, but it seems like they have faith with me, and I'm very proud of this, and very proud of that, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Like, it was actually pretty humble and pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. But one of the trainers there at the time uh, was kind of a, a bit, I guess he was bitter. Like, a buddy of mine explained to me later, like, he must have been bitter or jealous or something. Uh, just, to, yeah. just in case anybody from home is listening to this, it definitely wasn't Baltimore Butcher Blood. He's the fucking man. I want to put that out there. Uh, but one of the I trainers... I know who the fuck that is. Like... Well, yeah, yeah, he's a guy from Maryland. You, you wouldn't know him. Uh, but <laughs> one of the other trainers that was, like, alongside him got super pissed at that and started texting some of the, like, under, like, some of the students that ran helped run training and stuff and being like, hey, beat the shit out of this kid until I talk to him. <laughs> and, like, everybody who got that text was like, no, AJ's cool as shit. He's a good kid. Why would we beat the shit out of him? Like, that's stupid. What's that going to teach him? He's not going to know why we're doing it. Uh, so everybody came up to me and told me that. And, like, even one of the people who's, like, a senior guy wrestling on the shows was like, yeah, I didn't really get why it was offensive. Uh, but maybe, like, you know, calm your britches down a little bit. You know, relax a little bit. Because uh, that kind of rubbed him the wrong way. But none of us are going to beat the shit out of you, even though he asked us to. Uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And then he kind of pulled me off to the side and, like, kind of like chewed out my ass like you're a student like like i know you didn't mean to but it's social media you got to be careful and this and that and like you don't want to brag about it and this and he was kind of nice but at the same time you could tell he was irritated and yeah then, but there was no bragging yeah, in your post like it could i guess it could be taken as bragging like hey i had my first match after a week like i said something like that but in in hindsight it was pretty harmless and yeah yeah like you know moral of the story is after you know a month actually being active member on the roster i'd already accomplished more than him in wrestling so he can eat my ass uh, <laughs> like nice sure. enough guy kind of a goober but then yeah after that for like the next several months all like a buddy of mine and a couple of other buddies would all just call me facebook i, I remember like when i was still in training right there was like um i uh so when i was still in training like initially i was still like wrestling fan on twitter as well so I um I just imagine I saw... your Twitter handle being wrestling fan. <laughs> no, that, that's I was still not the case. I was still the wrestling fan on Twitter. Yeah, the, the wrestling, wrestling fan, the only one. The, not there's um, definitely none others. But but the thing was like uh th- there was once like on like some dirt sheet site like it reported that like John Morrison was booked for a pro wrestling Holland show. You know. That's sexy. But what but, 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 but motherfucker. But it wasn't booked, like, it wasn't announced yet by Pro Wrestling Holland. It was just, like, on a dirt sheet side for some reason. I I, th- I had done, like, a tweet about it. Like, oh, hey, like, this is where I train as well. It's pretty cool that John Morrison is going to be on a show. You know? And then, like, they, like, they took me aside in training. I was like, yeah, we didn't announce it yet. So don't tweet that stuff out. And blah, blah, blah. I was just really? like. Really? I was just like, yeah, maybe, like, prevent me from finding it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, like, like if you're seeing it on a website, why are you like, giving are you me shit about this? Yeah. You should give the like dirt sheet people shit about this. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. When I got into wrestling, like I didn't really know much about independence and stuff like that. I didn't know what dirt sheets were uh, when people talked about them. 
Dude, I didn't know jack shit about independence. But, like, you were at least looking stuff up and everything. I was kind of like, oh, what's that? Like, even when I started for a couple months, like, people would talk about it. You started like, when you were, like, 15, though. No, I was, I was 17. I was a little Yeah, older. whatever. I had Something. access to the interwebs. It was still dial-up, <laughs> but... <laughs> it was still dial-up when you were 17? Oh, yeah, haven't I told you this? My household uh, didn't get cable until 2003. And it didn't have anything other than dial-up internet until mm, six years ago when my dad brought home one of those like mobile wireless things uh, oh my God. for work. And then I got him in trouble because I used it to stream WrestleMania. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, why is the bill like way higher than it should be? He's like, I'm sorry, my, gut, my son got a hold of it. So I stopped being able to use that. Then I got my own from work and would steal, steal the use of it. And then finally, like, I don't know, four years ago at this point. Yeah, probably like four years ago. No, nah, it would have been three. Three years ago. Uh, I finally, like, since I moved home because I was traveling so much, I actually got cable, ran up to the house, and got actual internet other than dial-up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's insane how long my family lived in the Stone Ages. Like, my first... Yeah, I, like, I, like, I can't even remember when I still had dial-up. Like the... I remember having dial-up, dial I just not remember when it was. I remember, <laughs> like, my bedroom used to be connected to my parents. And so, like, we shared a wall. And I would be up late at night under the covers on my laptop hooked up to the dial-up internet. I'd be like, oh, cool, just doing whatever. I don't know, probably downloading porn, but which, you know, it's dial-up, so it would take four hours. Uh, you use LimeWire, dude? Yeah, dude, dog. Yeah. You didn't even know what you were going to get. You're just hoping from the best from the description. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and then every once in a while I'd get disconnected. I'd be like, fuck, do I risk them hearing me by reconnecting? And they're... Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What do I do, and I risked it every time, and it always worked out because my dad sleeps like a log. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know, like, I, th I think like my parents, but especially my dad, was pretty progressive when it comes to like technology and computer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like he was always like on top of it and getting new computer stuff because he was he was very aware. Was like, oh yeah, like this is where shit is headed. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> My family, not so much. Like, you know how everybody has, like, their... Like, we we grew up in the 90s, right? So everybody has those giant video cameras, and they have all their earliest, record like, memories recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have that. No, neither do I. We barely got fucking pictures. Like... Yeah. <laughs> like... Like, my mom and dad didn't give a fuck about that. But then, like, my, my cousin, so my aunt and uncle, they have, like, a shitload of that. And then, like, every family gathering, we have to watch that. It's like, okay, I've seen, like, I've seen this, like, fucking 50 times. And I'm, like, halfway through 20. I should, like, <laughs> we only come together, like, twice a year. So figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I get so sick of seeing me and, like, my cousins and my brother as babies. Like, oh, look at how cute you were. I was like, Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Look yeah. how much of a fucking stallion I am now, Grandma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at that fucking glow up I did. Fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a cute baby. Well, guess what? I just shaved my head. My head doesn't look nearly as large now. <laughs> yeah. Legit a conversation I had with Kelly earlier, actually. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because I was talking to her on the phone the other day, and she made a comment like, now that you got a shaved head, wow, your like head finally matches your body. I'm like, oh wow, I don't. That was surprisingly insulting, but thank you. <laughs> it's true, it's true. But damn, didn't want to think about it. To be fair though, Kelly also says you look like Jason Statham, so I'm pretty sure she's at least half blind. No, <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't get it, but I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, do you still some, can't get over that? Do you, some other people said it as well, but do you? I think only Julian said it, but I'll take it. I'll take it to the bank. <laughs> Do you still need to get together now with your family, like, twice a year? Yeah, something like that. Like, for birthdays and for Christmas and all that kind of shit. I think, to be yeah. honest, we don't do birthdays. I think, honestly, as far as my... I usually family, try to skip... I, I usually try to skip my birthday, but then, like, my mom remembers it, so... I think... As She's as like, we should do something. I was like, we don't We don't have to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, that's an option, but no. <laughs> you know, it's also an option... Is not yeah, doing that. Yeah. <laughs> There's always an option to not do whatever it is you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think now, because of my travel schedule, like, the two big times, like, we would always see each other Easter 
Thanksgiving, Christmas, because, you know, America. Got oh, it. Easter. You guys get together for Easter? Yeah, that was a thing, especially when we were younger, because, you know, Easter eggs and bullshit. Uh, then it became just Thanksgiving. Yeah, we would never Christmas. do that. And, it, like, randomly there'll be, like, parties, like, if my uncle has, like, a crab feast or something. Those are pretty cool. Uh, but because of travel... He has what? Crab feast. Do you not know what that... Do you know... Have you ever been to... I don't know what a crab feast is, no. Oh, so a crab feast is when uh, somebody, like, has a party at their house, and they get this, like, a load of crabs, which is pretty expensive. And Maryland's famous for its crabs. Uh, okay. So you get a, like several bushes. I'm famous for my crabs as well. But hey, oh. uh, no, man. Now, now we're shock jockeys, dude. We're making it. <laughs> so you get a huge bushel of crabs and you steam them up and everybody comes over and chips in a couple bucks and you all eat it together. So my, de- my uncle sometimes does that. And so my cousins who are like brothers to me will come from uh, like the western side of Maryland and come enjoy that. And... But now with traveling and stuff so much, I only see my extended family at Christmas. Like, that's it. Yeah, I, I see them way less as well due to, due to all the wrestling and stuff, right? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, Dude, I, see, I, like, I see them way less I, as well due to personal choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, just not showing up. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I showed up fashionably late last year for my own mom's birthday. Oh, really? So I, was, I, was, I was like the last dude there. Yeah, because I was just like, I was traveling back from Germany, right? So oh, like, yeah stayed the night and then traveled back so i, so I showed up hella late <laughs> but you know it is what it is i don't like i don't know like i like my family but you know it's it's not like i don't have to be with them all the time yeah i'm you know what I, mean? I think we're both the same like everybody who's listening to this or will listen to it later knows like we're pretty similar people so like we're both outside of the public view pretty antisocial, and just kind of keep to ourselves yeah. Uh, and so that goes with me and my family as well. And my family, like, like one day you'll meet my dad, I'm sure. My dad, like, doesn't talk to his I family. hope so, dude. Yeah, <laughs> legend. I hope so, because uh, he's a fucking redneck, dude. Yeah, I love that so, shit. But he, <laughs> he's not, like, out, like, I wouldn't say, like, yeah, let's just go with that. Um, com- <laughs> it's hard to explain, but my dad's not very social. He doesn't go out and do things. He doesn't go out and have enough friends. He's very much like me. I get it a lot from my dad. And his side of the family is like that as well. So when everybody gets together for Christmas and stuff, it's not this overly rambunctious social event. We have fun. I play with the kids, stuff like that. I throw away, I throw around my little cousins with reckless abandon. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Fucking um, shit can them at a wall. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Lift them upside down by their like one foot and let them dangle. Don't know if I got them. I just assume I do. Um, yeah. Sometimes you got to take that risk. Yeah. But so like, that's kind of how it is. So that, but like, I've always kind of been a little bit more different than my family. I think I look at things a little bit more liberally. I'm like, they don't get wrestling. They're all very like blue collar workers. I, I didn't go in that line. Of oh life. yeah. Like no, nobody in my family really gets wrestling either. Yeah. But to be fair, all of them are like super supportive of me, which yeah. is cool. I wouldn't say, you know, like <laughs> I would say my dad and my mom are in their, in their ways. My mom, my mom, definitely like my mom pretty much without telling me paid for my training. Uh, or a good half of it. And, like, my dad's supportive in his own right very much. Uh, sometimes he's kind of like, well, why don't you just do this while you're home? And I'm like, because then I wouldn't be able to go back over to Germany. Like, <laughs> but my, the rest of my family, like, my cousins and my cousin Jonathan all think it's, like, so rad. The Some of the cousins do, but the all rest are like, you do that wrestling? <laughs> yeah. But, like, in my older years now, like, I think I... I get them a little bit more and I think they get me a little bit more. So I'll make more of the effort to be at like sure, special like, events when I'm home. And I try, you all, you all, gr- you all grow up. And I think like part of growing up is like, uh, getting a certain understanding about each other and just about different people in general. Yeah. Right. And I think also so. now I'm older in a sense that like, especially when like, I think you helped me with this. Honestly, when you first met me, everything stuck to me and got on my nerves and would, I would take offense to it. Now, if like one of my uncles just like, yeah, AJ with that expensive underwear, I'm kind of like, you fucking right, it's expensive. Like that's not a joke. <laughs> like shit costs money, homeboy. Yeah. Uh, like so, I don't really take that stuff personally. I think they're kind of like buddy up to that or whatever. And I guess, yeah. Like, I, never... I I hard, I hardened you up. Like yeah. Like like it's a Dragon Age game. <laughs> 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 and like again i've never had a bad relationship with any of my family members whatsoever it's just now that i'm older i feel like i'm understood a little bit more but and i try to like make sure especially if kelly's here like we'll try to attend a family social event but there never happens to be one while she's here except for when my grandmother died that was the only time she met my extended family 
Oh, okay. That was real unfortunate. That was a real hard way to make my, see my <laughs> meet my mother's side of the family for the first time. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Part of me thinks it's really funny. I mean, <laughs> I said it as a, I said it for a punchline. It, but it, it was a tough situation at the time. But like in hindsight, especially my family, like the next time they see her, they're gonna be like, "Oh, so you showed up when someone isn't dead, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> So, like, my mom's side yeah. of the family is really cool about that stuff. Like, my mom, too. Like, I, I figured out recently. Uh, yeah. Was, Continue. Was, sorry, Kelly something something in the chat, and I didn't understand it. But, uh, like, my mom, like, because there was this running joke between me and my grandmother that, like, I would, like, kind of, like, play with her, and she would, like, chase me, or I'd tell her, like, her old ass couldn't get up and get me. You know, stuff that's rude, but my grandmother loved it and fed <laughs> off of it, and she'd give me the look, like, I'm pretty wily. I'll stab you. And yeah, so, yeah, when yeah. my grandmother passed away, and I was holding my mom and consoling her, one of the things she, like, she, like, again, this is five minutes after I get there. She gets up and looks at me, and she's just, like, was still with tears in her eye, which now I know why I'm so like my mom. Uh, my mom looks at me, and she's like, I bet you feel a lot safer now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, I don't have to worry about some old crazy woman yeah. trying to stab me in the middle of the night. And, yeah, I get that. And I'm pretty sure, like, my response was like, yeah, I didn't want to be the first one to say it, but you're goddamn right. There's a weight <laughs> off my shoulders. <laughs> the thing is, like, uh, I remember, like, when, um, so both of my granddads are, uh, granddads are dead, right? But my, uh, my granddad from, like, my father's side of the family died when I was, like, really young. Like, I was still in elementary school. Um, so I, I don't know, like I never really got to build up much of a relationship with him because, you know, most of my relationship with him was when I was like a baby and you're like, you don't take anything in and you don't remember anything from that time pretty yeah. much. Um, but then like my other grandfather died, I think like two years ago, I, I guess it is now. Jesus. It's that long ago, probably. Or maybe it was like last year. I don't know. But recently, you yeah. know? and uh within, within the decade yeah i remember like i found out oh yeah it was, it was last year because <laughs> this is how i remember because it was right before uh it was at a hamburg show for wxw that i found out that like my mom texted me that my granddad had passed away oh wow you know and it was like it was the it was the show that had the match where it was me and tim versus avalanche and uh dave so <laughs> That's where I found out. I think, like, on the show itself, like, I only told Tim, you know? And then, um, but it was just a thing of, like, oh, like, it was, it was, it was happening anyway. Like, he had been sick for a while, uh -huh. right? So then, like, I kind of, like, saw it coming. And then, uh, so my mom texted me, and I was like, well, did he, like, did he pass, like, peacefully, you know? And then she was like, yeah, like, he didn't really struggle. Like, he just passed pretty, pretty quickly. And then, uh, so I was just like, oh, all right, well, good. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I like, like, I don't know, like, I didn't have like a very emotional reaction to it or anything. Yeah. Um, and then like, like I said, like I only told Tim, because he like at one point, like I, I guess maybe he could tell it, like I was like a little distraught or whatever. Yeah. And then he came up to me, he's like, hey man, you all right? And I was just like, well, I just learned like that my granddad passed away, but. He passed away peacefully. He was already really sick, so I'm kind of cool with it, you know. And he was just like, "Oh yeah, that sucks," but you know, we all pass away at some point. I was like, "Yeah, you're right." That would be Tim's fucking response, <laughs> wouldn't it? We all gotta go sometime, <laughs> kid. Slaps you in the back, yeah. and he walks out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, oh, thanks, Tim. You go out all chipper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really needed that. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> but um, but then later, like he had like an open casket kind of thing like just like just for the grandkids and stuff right i remember going there with like my two uh my two cousins right and they were like bawling like crazy like they were like crying their eyes out yeah and then like i was just standing there like with my mom and then my mom was like hey you're like just so you know like it's, it's okay if you cry as well you know <laughs> and you just look at your mom like no it isn't i'm a grown fucking man and just dead eye your little cousins <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, but like I stood there, like I did, I, I, I had no urge to cry or get emotional at all, because I was just, I just looked at him in the open casket. I just told my mom, I was like, like, why would I cry? Like he looks so peaceful, you know? Like he looks like he's finally at rest. Yeah. So I was just like, there's no like point in crying. Like I think so, yeah. before, 
like my grandmother actually passed, I had two days prior she had fallen. She was, you know, pretty much in a coma or whatever. And I was told that she wouldn't survive the night. So I was kind of made peace with it. And then two days later when she finally did, when she was in a hospice, I was, hospice, I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, okay, so now it's actually, but I had kind of come to terms with it a couple of days before. And I still like, like, I didn't really get too emotional. Like it hit me, but I don't like, and I think some people find it weird, but I know you get it. And I know, I think Kelly gets it as well. Uh, and a few others. I think my mom gets it. Uh, when it comes to deaths, I process it. It sucks, but like I don't outwardly show it. I'm just kind of like, yeah, this is a really shitty day, but you know, business as usual. Like you know, kind of keep going. I think especially with my grandmother's death, uh, death, I was kind of like, no, nah, like I saw my mom was real upset, and I was like, no, I gotta, I gotta be here for her. I gotta be here for my mom. Like it's not, it's not my time to get upset. Like this, this is, yeah, this is for her. Like I need to be here for her. So like. I just kind of like kept it to myself and kind of was like, I'm not even going to think about it. Like I know the situation, I can see the body, uh, but like it's, you know. I, I, I kind of had that as well, where like I, I once had a funeral of um, like a cousin from like my dad's side, right? Yeah. Uh, she had like a baby, but then like it died like very early on, oh. right? Like it, like it all went kind of fucked up and everything. But then like I went to that funeral and like my brother and my mom, were like crying like crazy because i guess like they like they feel way more empathy for that stuff than me yeah and it was also the thing oh no like he's taken too soon this and that and for me it was also kind of like well like i never met the baby you know, oh, <laughs> you know? like that kind of thing but it was also the thing of like yeah like like what you were just saying like um i felt like i was more there just to like emotionally support my mom yeah, absolutely. So that she had like a shoulder to cry on, you know, so that like I kind of had to tough it out, I guess. Yeah, 100 percent. Also, I just realized that the name of the first episode of the podcast is going to be called Death and Family. I'm not sure how I feel. About that. <laughs> I'm loving it. We're on a good fucking track. Yeah. I mean, how long are we recording right now? Like half an hour? Half already? an hour. Yeah, I think we'd go. Mm-hmm. I think we go till 50 and then we leave like the last 10 for maybe like questions from the chat, maybe. Oh, yeah, we could. Just an idea. We'll try it out this week, see if we like it. And if we don't, and we don't say anything, you guys know next week you guys lost a shot. Our podcast is usually an hour? Uh, like, some people go, like, the ones I listen to, they're like, oh, we try to keep it to an hour. Some go to, like, two and a half, three. It depends on the subject, really. Oh, all right, fair enough. Why? Well, oh, yeah, I guess you... Were you thinking? I don't, I don't know. Like, like I just, I just don't listen to a lot of podcasts myself. Oh, that's right. You tell me that uh, all the time, and I just constantly, not forget, but just pass over the information <laughs> you don't forget it you just ignore it yeah i just like that's just something urine says he doesn't listen to podcasts <laughs> uh, yeah it's i don't know like i used to i used to listen to more podcasts like i used to listen to the rooster teeth podcast a lot okay right and then uh i used to listen to the stone cold podcast too same same which, which I think is one of the more entertaining, like it's definitely the most entertaining wrestling one. One of opinion. the first ones I signed on to and listened to, he spent the beginning 20 minutes explaining how he had a dream the night before about he was in the middle of a dream, started eating out some Sasquatch pussy. And I was like, Steve <laughs> Austin, my man, this is the content I'm here for. I remember one of his episodes, he, he talks like 20 to 30 minutes about how he fucking... About these giant fucking rats. Yes, the rats on his, that are on, the, uh, on his farm. On his ranch, yeah. I remember like twenty minutes in, I was like, I remember pausing and being like, "What the fuck am I listening to?" <laughs> so good. And then like, yeah. I, like I think it was earlier this year. Maybe they were renewing their contract or earlier last year, like beginning of twenty nineteen. Like for six months straight, they just did reruns, and so like he wasn't involved or whatever. So like I've fallen out of it. Uh, yeah, I haven't given it a listen since, but it used to be, yeah, it used to be solid because he's just an up, like an outstanding good dude. And we'd have indie guys on and be like, hey, you know how to work? Like, tell me your thoughts on this. Like, just made more money <laughs> yeah. than anybody in professional wrestling, but the most humble, coolest dude. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, I really like, <laughs> I like this episode with Walter. Oh, yeah, it's just, that was the last one I listened just, to. Yeah, because it's just two country boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just from different <laughs> places of the planet yeah Yeah, it's great and like oh man i know this is changing subject again but since this is death and family episode uh i forgot i just popped in my head randomly talking thinking about walter i don't know why uh okay but it reminded me at my grandmother so i've had at my (laughs) grandmother's funeral not this past one the one before it 
like what kept me from crying i know this is a real weird place to put it but i didn't want to go past yeah. it because it's so dorky was i kept remembering yoda's quote of don't mourn those who become the force rejoice them and i kept thinking about that over and over and i was like yeah i remember you telling me this yeah. <laughs> and i'm just kind of like this is a real even as a kid i was like i'm so dorky but this is keeping me from crying so i'll just keep thinking this I don't know. Why Why would you not want to cry, though? I don't know. I think, just, let, just let it out, bro. I think just growing up. Sometimes you got to have a good cry, dude. Dude, I get that now as an adult, but I think as a kid growing up in the household, I did. I was. Yeah, you feel crying. embarrassed when you cry, right? Yeah, and like, so, yeah. it's not something I want to show. And I think because, again, I grew up, my dad's side of the family is all big blue-collar dudes that are big and huge. Like, you don't. <laughs> They're big and huge. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> Like crying. Great like, I've only seen my dad cry once, and just because of the ways, I was kind of like, "You're being fucking weird. What are you doing? Get yourself together." <laughs> like, and in hindsight, that's a shitty way to think about it. But like, I don't know, just how I was kind of raised. I guess is like, yeah, I've, I've, I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen my dad cry. I don't know, man. He like, <laughs> he's, he's like very, he's a bit odd emotionally as well. My dad. Yeah, your dad. What is it? Jay Pritchett from uh, Modern Family. Yeah, yeah, he's very much like that, yeah. I'd love it. I, but I, yeah. Oh, I remember I met your I remember your dad after our cage match. And like, oh, yeah. Not to get too inside baseball, but like I <laughs> made Yearn bleed and uh, did favors for him to make that happen and all that kind of stuff. And then like first person I see when I get back was like, Yearn's like, oh, yeah, this is my dad. And he's going like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was he's like, like fuck. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is fucking cool. Yeah, I, yeah, he he was there when I had the hair for the hair match as well. Nice. And then like he got backstage, and I was just like, "That was awesome!" And he was just like, "Dad, I look like a fucking idiot right now." He's like, "Yeah, it's great." Yeah. He <laughs> just, like he got really excited about. That. He just smacks you in the back. It's good for the business, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he would say that. I, yeah. I hope. I want him to. <laughs> but yeah, he's like I don't know, like yeah, I. I definitely have seen him cry. I think about it, but the thing is, like, he's like, like I say, he's very weird emotionally, where he's like kind of emotionally shut off yeah. and everything. But I think it's also more like since I've grown up more and I've matured more, more I get him way more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean, because like it's also like he's like a lot of him like just being emotionally shut off is just him like being antisocial. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like he and I obviously like work in the same field. Insecurity. Pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, he's a he's a big time pro wrestler. Yeah. But, no, but like you know we work is, in the same field, you, and then like I get it like so much now. <laughs> you said that so quickly. It sounded like you said, oh, "Me and my dad work in, in the same field." Insecurity, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> that would be. But yeah. But yeah, it was nice to finally like put a face to the the myth, man, and the legend that is your dad. <laughs> Is he much of a myth, though? I mean, for you, the way you build him up to me, like, I, I know you probably don't talk to too many people about your dad, but obviously we're pretty close, so we talk about it a bunch. And so I was yeah. kind of like, hell yeah, like, I can't wait to meet this man. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, when it comes to my dad, I think the entire locker room is just like, I can't wait to miss, meet Mr. Winkler. <laughs> like, some of them from seeing Facebook comments, and then when me and Jackson represented America as Donald Trump supporters at a random Yeah, and he was, show, really, he was really excited he about was it. He was so proud of me. Yeah, <laughs> like I was like, "Hey, Dad, I'm representing America tonight," and I sent him a picture of the American flag and the "Make Great America Great Again" hat, which I would never ever wear, uh, but I did. But you did, you did that day. And my dad' response was, "I was like, Dad, making you proud." His response was, "Now you're cooking with gas." <laughs> I still love that, dude. Dude, everybody does. I still love it. Like, I've never been more proud of my dad and his complete opposite views of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good moment though it was great i think I still... now you're cooking with gas the thing is like i think like at one point like i saw like a youtube video of like somebody playing dragon ball fighters uh -huh. and they said that and i linked you like with the timestamp it was like yo because <laughs> i'd never heard that phrase before <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think i had to that point either and i'm you know as american as they come i guess but like that was the first time i heard it and i was fuck 25 years old 26 yeah something like that man i don't know that berlin show was fun that was the first time ladies and gentlemen that uh Jern simmons got drunk and i am the reason for it 
I wouldn't say you're the reason no, for no, no, no. it. No, no, no. I would say I'm the group saying, in general. I'm saying I'm the reason for it, and I'm the leading contributor. <laughs> I'm saying I take so... I don't think, I don't think that's the case it at all. It wasn't the situation. It wasn't that drinks were quote-unquote free. It wasn't the fact <laughs> that everybody was doing it. No, I am the reason. You, I don't think... You, did you buy me any drinks? Nobody bought anybody any drinks, I think is the point. I think I did. Oh, yeah, that's true, but you never really ordered anything either. I think I did, because yeah. there was money charged to our card, but I don't... Yeah, but a lot of people charged to my card as well, Yeah. even though I didn't. But I don't think... And I, I, like, it was like 400 plus euros that, would ch that was charged to it. It was crazy. I think Jacoby told me after the weekend, <laughs> like two weeks later, because he was still pretty peeved about it, because of some stuff like I won't discuss, it's not for you know, public consumption or whatever. Yeah, But yeah. he was kind of like, yeah, like... The, it was way more than a couple hundred euros that we spent as a collective group, and I was like, "Oh, shit. oh yeah, yeah." I was, I was very much aware of that. Yeah, what a good night. It was like, what is it? Uh, what, it was really fun though. It was like a, <laughs> so just to lay the groundwork for people, sometimes WXW will do paid for shows, so you can like buy WXW as entertainment, and we'll put on matches. And this company was having their end of the year, end of the fiscal year, like big office party where they give out awards and stuff like that. Very large, like contracting company or something. So at the biggest event hotel in Europe and if like a five star hotel in Berlin, they had a wrestling yeah. show in front of 1500 employees that did not give a single flying fuck about wrestling. Apparently they actually really enjoyed it. What? Cause that, they didn't yeah. fucking make a sound. No, I, I know, but that's the thing. Like I, I remember Andy telling me that, that afterwards, like he talked to like a bunch of people there because a lot of them that like came up to him like a lot of those employees came up to him and were like that was amazing that was so much fun blah like they were just like super excited about it but like well yeah, fucking i couldn't tell <laughs> when I was yeah. beating the shit out of that ginger kid with chops he sure didn't make any sound and he sure didn't appreciate it yeah <laughs> really? is that is that where you fucked up the absolute knee drop if it wasn't the soccer field, then yeah, it was then. Because I, I think I fucked it up more than once. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, absolute knee drop. Everybody here who's listening, it's like the famouser, but with the knee. I just figured it was a yeah. regular-ass knee drop because it was the second time I'd worked with Andy. I had never really taken it. Never really had seen Andy work. It was, I was really new with the company. And so, like, I'm down on the mat, <laughs> and he looks down, and he's doing the absolute. Uh, you're in? Absolute. What? Oh, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so... <laughs> He looks down, does that, and he goes, sell up? And then comes off the ropes, and I'm like, it's a knee drop. Why the fuck would I sell up? <laughs> and then he gets to, right next to me and just looks at me like, what the fuck? And then just gives a regular knee drop. And he's covering me, and I'm like, this is a lame way to cap off uh, like a fucking comeback. And then, of course, Andy's probably thinking, this is a lame way to cap off a fucking comeback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Man, that was a and then he probably picked you up and chopped you. So. No, he I, he was a lot nicer. He knew me at that point, so he didn't do it then. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I think I sold out. Like, and I still actually have the giant American flag that they got for us. And I said, except I think I got it mixed up because I have Jackson's because it's got his blood on it. Oh, his blood? Yeah, brother, we bled for our country. What? He he busted open that huge schnoz of his, I think. Oh, oh, oh it was right. some accident, and then he wiped his nose off on the flag, which I'm pretty sure is illegal. But fuck. <laughs> It should be. That's fucking hell of American, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, dude, I like my favorite part of that was that, like, in all that get up, right? Yeah. Jackson looks so much like um, the dude from Eastbound and Down. What's his name? Kenny Danny Powers. Baby. Kenny yeah. Powers. That's it. Yeah. Hell yeah. He, he looks exactly like him. He's got the background in baseball too. Yeah. Like, yeah. So good. I have to find that picture. I might have it here on the computer. Uh, All right. of, of me, you, and him drinking champagne in the middle of the ring afterwards. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great. Confetti. It was God, so I was so fucking fat back then, too. You it was were. Awful. I was also <laughs> so, like, muscularly undeveloped at the time. Which, at the time, yeah. I, was, I, like, I was really like, oh, I'm pretty big. And now, like, I think I'm pretty underdeveloped. But then I look at myself back then, and I'm kind of like, man, I was a little bitch. I saw, I saw a picture of you the other day from, like, way back when. I think it was, like, a CZW promo picture. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I fucking, I fucking found the weights and I found the proper way to use them too. <laughs> Which is time to talk yeah, about our, you, time to talk about our yeah. first sponsor, Fresh uh, 
Fresh Coaching. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Brought to you by Jerry first sponsor. Yeah. Our first sponsor on it and Dollar Shave Club. Yeah, Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll be expecting Ray that. Shadow yeah. Legends. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Have you actually played Ray Channel Legends ever? No, has anyone? I have. Really? Is it actually fun? Yeah, my my, my brother plays it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess people must be playing it if they have the money to advertise on every fucking YouTube video I watch. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like, I played for a little bit, but I was just like, uh, I, don't, I already played Dokkan. I, really, <laughs> yeah. I really need this. I don't have enough time to separate to that and Dokkan. Also, I love how so many people in the chat watching this live instantly when we talked about sponsors were like, what about Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think every once in a while when Kelly does a stream, which you can catch her at twitch.tv slash killer Kelly, uh, cheap plug. Uh, cheap as in she didn't pay me, but, you know, I love her. Uh, every once in a while, I'll just dip in, and I'm a moderator. I'm supposed to be helping keeping the peace and stuff, and I'll just dip in and be like, "Is this Raid Shadow Legends?" And she has no idea what that means. Guys, I lost urine. Oh my god! Oh, disconnect. How did I lose urine? Yo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can now. I lost you for a second. That was, I was. Oh, okay. That was weird. I was just going to say, like, Kelly isn't up to date with any, like, pop culture stuff that There's... includes Ray Shadow Legends. I don't think that is pop culture, but yeah, word. We'll go with that. <laughs> it's absolutely pop culture, what? dude. By pop culture, you mean me, you, and Dragon? No. And Louis, dude, you saw it in a chat. Like, fucking everybody that's, oh, yeah. like, but it's like... On, the, on the internet at least once a day knows about Ray Shadow Legends. I mean,. On the internet and is gamers like us, I guess, if we can call ourselves gamers. No, because they like they sponsor other shit as well. Oh, Kelly says in the chat, I've never seen you do that, AJ, which means I've gotten away with it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so the people who know, or it, or it means Kelly just never watches her chat. Oh, she watches her chat. Leave her be. <laughs> uh, she actually, she, if you guys want to check out her stream, you get so more, so much more pissy nowadays. But I give. Kelly shit instead of you. Oh, shit, awesome. I, I don't mind if you give me shit, but like you're not affecting me with it. You're affecting her, so and she's not here to defend herself. Also, <laughs> she's here. She's in the chat. Yeah, but she's not going to. It's me and you. Uh, also, officially, let me say thank you for the for the gifted sub to Killer. I don't give a fuck, dude. Well, shut up. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Another thing about that Berlin show was there's like so many stories I feel like we shouldn't tell. But, oh man, like I, it's crazy how, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening oh, to shit. you. Okay. So usually I at least see a little bit of audio level, but like you were just dead. No, uh, but unlike you, I don't talk through people's stories all the time. I just let them finish. Yeah. I mean, you're not as good a person as me, whatever. But, uh, and with you, I never know if you're going to finish. So sometimes I just got to throw it in there. Uh, yeah. I but, mean, you throw it in there like after one sentence though, true. like, I get excited. I very very rarely get to finish one of my stories I'm when I'm excited. talking to you. I'm excitable. Uh, but that was like by far the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in in my entire life. And oh yeah, for sure. We acted like fucking assholes, and it was great. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what you do. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's, like, <laughs> yeah, that's like... the most classic pro wrestler I've ever felt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, like. I I had fun though. It was great. It was yeah, a, it was a good time. I think the best part this this is part of the story we definitely can tell. But I woke up like noon, missed all my alarms, <laughs> and I like I woke up to music. Okay, let me see, let me paint the scene. I stumbled yeah, up to my yeah. room, closed the door, put a chain on it. Whether or not the chain stayed there all night is a different story. Uh, <laughs> eventually, just closed the store upright so I wouldn't be bothered again. I went and laid in bed and was like, well, if Jackson needs me, he'll call or whatever. I wake up very foggy with my head hurting to the sound of, like, music. And I was like, what the fuck? And I look over to the bed next to me, and it hasn't been touched. So Jackson never came home that night. So, you know, good for him. Good, good strong. No, he just stayed up, up the entire night and then left, left with Francis. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Okay, so left me behind. Whatever. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, well, you we guys were, weren't riding yeah, with we, each other. We were so. driving together, so whatever. But uh, then, then this grogginess, I'm like, well, now I need to find the source of music because I'm getting creeped. And I look over, and there's Yearn sitting in the chair in the corner with his dead eyes just fixated on me. 
Yeah. And my, I was, uh, the first thing I said, I was like, how the fuck did you get in there? And he's just like, the door? I was like, no, it's, yeah. lo it's locked. How did you get in? He's like, I just opened the door. I was like, no, you don't understand. It's a hotel door. It locks automatically. <laughs> How'd you get in? He's like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just pushed it open. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh fuck. And then. Do you was, remember what song I was playing? I think it was Led Zeppelin. No, Led Zeppelin came before. You didn't wake up to that. Okay, which one did I wake up to? What is love by Hadaway? Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> That's what you want to but then woke up to. I remember like everything processed and I'm just staring at you and I'm like, okay, uh, how long have you been there? And then you just with the same expression look at me and you're like, this is the second song. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck. And I'm like, how do yeah, you Yeah, like I said, Led Zeppelin already happened, yeah. bro. And I'm like, are you okay? How are you feeling? And then you look at me, same expression, dead eyes. I'm <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, though. So much. And then we're like, okay, don't worry. We'll get on the road. We'll find the truck because we didn't know where it was. We'll yeah. get a couple road monsters, you know, two each as, you know, as per usual. Oh, my God. Yeah. And we'll, that was such a bad road trip. Yeah. And we'll make the three hours home. I think it's just about three hours. And then I have an appointment with Toby. <laughs> it wasn't. Time. Yeah. We got on the truck, turned on the GPS. Six and a half hours to your destination. And we're like, what? Yeah. Yeah, it took us way longer than that. I think yeah. it ended up taking us like eight. Yeah, we got back at like eight o'clock, and then Yuren was like, all right, now I'm going to try to get home. And then I had to go. Like, I had no. A... You didn't? I stayed at the apartment. Oh, that's right. You did. And I like got changed and walked downstairs and was like, Toby, I know you said you'd fix my back, but I'm a little late. He's like, it's okay. We'll do it after training. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I remember, like, for me, though, like, I remember getting, uh, getting back to my room, like, really fucking drunk. I remember doing lucha rolls in the hallway because I was, like, I was hanging out with Shooter and the Dina. I was just like, hey, guys, check this out. And I popped off, like, four lucha rolls. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, like, I went into my room, and, like, Andy was in my room. He's already out. Like, he was sleeping. I went, like, I went into my bed, and I was just like, everything was fucking spinning. So I, so I was just like, ah, fuck. Uh, and then, but then I was like, ah, oh, like, I felt really sick. So I was just like, oh, I'm going to go, like, try and throw up. So I just sat next to the toilet for, like, 20 minutes, and I didn't throw up at all. And then, <laughs> and then I was just like, I should go to bed. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And But then I was still like, you know what? I know I'm going to be fucked tomorrow, but I should set my alarm. We need to leave before noon, right? Because, like, noon was, like, checkout time. So um, I set my alarm at 10. And I was like, then I can just, like, hang out for an hour and try to recuperate. Yeah. And then uh, I'll go over to AJ and see if he can get his ass up. Nope. Nope. <laughs> but I did get up at 10, and then, like, I stayed in bed until 11, and then, like, I got up, I got my shit, and I went over to you. So. Yeah, man, you're a fucking soldier. You handled your first drunken night real well. Also, I would say, yeah. full disclosure, just for the company and the company that hired us in the hotel, nothing was damaged, nothing was broken, there was no incidents, anything like that. Good, wholesome. Oh, no. Good, wholesome, nothing good like times. That. Nothing Nothing was damaged. There was nothing that had to be paid for later. Nothing bad happened. Uh, it was just a the wor fun, worst crazy thing way. I did was do, worst thing we did was me doing lucha rolls in the hallway and which I was anything, probably be, probably being loud. Yeah, that was live free entertainment to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> also, man, I forgot that hotel had like saunas and lounges and spas for us to hang out with. Oh before yeah, before the you show. You and Jackson went to the went to the sauna. That was yeah, cool. I remember we like walked out of the sauna and there's Reiner is just soaking in the world and like a towel naked, just being like, "This is amazing." Oh, yeah, so good. All right, so we're at uh, the kind of like ten minute left mark. Maybe in the future we'll go longer or whatever. See how it goes. We'll we'll talk about it off air. Uh, yeah, sure. You want to open it up to a couple questions before we hit that hour mark? Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, ready? Why not? Set. Maybe we should go. have done like a oh. tweet and <laughs> they're like, "Hey, ask us questions." Yeah. No, they no, no. They'll spread the word or something. All right. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll, we'll tweet that. We'll tweet that the next. I time don't trust guys. them, dude. I don't trust them. Oh <laughs> man, yeah. I don't know. They they might be slacking. 
but we'll just see. so you guys just so you guys know like no question is off limits i will answer anything and everything i can't speak for aj though oh also yeah you're in chat your discord chat real quick that's something just for you before we continue on with this what i texted you something in the discord chat so look at that real yeah quick. i already saw that okay cool just making sure uh, I just didn't respond to it. <laughs> yeah, no, no need, as long as you saw it. Why did Julian? Uh, Yuren, can you tell us about the time you've been to the Dutch version of America Got Talent? Oh, yeah, Holland Got Talent. I've, Wait, I've I done, didn't I've, know this. I've done a couple of talent shows. Really? Uh, yeah, I just get asked for them all the time. What, what was your <laughs> so, talent that you are showing off? So, as Pro Wrestling Holland, we were on Holland's Got Talent. Oh, okay, um, I have heard this story. Never we, were, we were invited for that, right? Because they were running out of acts, so we got invited. So we did like a five-minute match kind of thing with like a bunch of run-ins and bullshit, and we had to set up the ring and all that kind of shit. It was awful. <laughs> it was a real shitty experience. And then like the director was like way too, um, I don't know, like kept like <laughs> getting way too close with the camera and everything to like our junk and all that kind of stuff. So I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan of that. Oh, so that's and then, and then, like, and, 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 and then it's like we had to like we had to be interviewed as well, and then uh, they just want drama and this and that like all the time, right? Eh, which I get, you know, it's TV. Um, but they were like, "Yeah, can can you talk about the injuries and everything?" And then they pointed to me. I was like, "Well, I can't really, because at that time I hadn't been injured at all, right?" So it's like, "Well, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't had an injury." All right, boring. We'll go to the next one. I was like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> But then um, all the all the judges like voted yes for us to go through to the next round, and then we never got called up for the next round. Nice. But I think like like one of the judges, who is some like older woman, was like super into me. Of course. Because I was like all big and burly. I, I guess she liked that. But that was that. And then like a a different talent show I did was um, fuck. Like I I forgot what it was called. But it's um, oh yeah, I, I bet you I could do it. Like that's a that's a translation to it, right? Yeah. And like I get invited for that one as well, uh, because of like somebody we know that works for TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to expose that because he yeah. might get in trouble. Yeah, no worries. But I was invited for that, and I just had to eat like a bunch of raw eggs in a span <laughs> of time. I think it was like three raw eggs, or was it like five raw eggs? In like two minutes and then like it was like with shell and all right oh, I, had to okay. eat that. I was about to say it sounds kind of easy but with the shell it sounds like it sucks yeah it's with the shell and then like it's just weird like te texture wise in yeah. your mouth because i remember like i i tried to do it like at home but like at home i had like large eggs and like it's fucking like that was a struggle you know what i mean yeah. and then like i got there and like the guy that like got me for it right he's like yeah you practice it all i was like honestly no dude <laughs> <laughs> and then like we did like a rehearsal and that's where i had to eat the three eggs and then like i i ate the three eggs like really quickly because they were like medium-sized eggs so they were way smaller so it was way easier yeah and then and then like all the producers there are like oh he's going he's going way too fast that's not good you know the blah 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 and then uh <laughs> so like the guy like afterwards came up to me he's like dude like you gotta slow down with eating them they're like really worried that it's not going to be like a photo finish and that sort of thing and it's just like i was just like they'll have a clock up right he was like yeah yeah so then like i just <laughs> milked it <laughs> you're just like okay don't worry brother i can work yeah that's that was the thing though like at, at the end of it like the host and all the producers were like super happy with me <laughs> <laughs> because it was also like i i did like back and forth with the host you know like i wasn't there like super like camera shy or whatever yeah i like i like there's there's a dutch word which is knuppert which is a really like obscure dutch word nobody really says it but it's just like it's a word for like yeah buddy or like great guy or whatever right uh -huh. and i was like so he introduced me he's like yeah you're thank you so much for being here and i was like thanks for having me you knuppert <laughs> yeah and, and, and then like he like popped he's like oh knuppert holy shit <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably the more fun one but yeah, okay. uh, we got, there's two questions in here, and I think those will be the final two that I like to roll. Uh, they're by Chino and then Mofo Matt. Uh, okay. Ch Chino's is questions for both of you. Any scare moments in the ring, like moments when you didn't feel safe being at the show slash performing? Uh, for me, I got I two. Was, uh, 
Sorry. What were you going to say? I thought it was scary when I broke my ankle. Yeah, that's actually one of my answers was, because uh, usually me and Yaren <laughs> fuck around a lot uh, on like some of the lower key shows. Not that anybody would ever notice, but we fuck around with each other. Stuff just only we would get. We don't yeah. compromise or the performance or anything for the viewing audience, of course. We'd never do that. They'd get their money's worth. But uh, like sometimes we'll fuck around. And like uh, when Yaren broke his ankle, he leaned to me and he was like wailing. Like it sounded like, not to belittle him and everything, it happens, you broke your ankle. But it was like a cry to where I thought he was kidding. And I was like, this is a closing stretch. we got to like get out of here. Why are you fucking around? And I go to lean in to say something. And Jan says, or Jay Skillet goes, get the fuck <laughs> in the ring now. Get, hurry, hurry. Yearns hurt. Yearns hurt. And yeah. like my own safety. Yeah, he was, he was able to tell right away. Yeah, like in my safety, it is what it is. Uh, like I've gotten hurt. I've gotten injured. And I just kind of brush it off. And you keep on walking. But like Yearns one of my best friends. And I could well, tell. There's a difference point, between being injured and being hurt. Yeah. And like. Yeah, I mean. And, like, Yearn's one of my best friends, and then when I saw him on the ground and all this other stuff and, like, having to finish the match without him, I was, like, real concerned. And then afterwards, like, the medics were coming up, and they were like, we're going to cut off the boot, we're going to do this, and being a wrestler and knowing what Yearn would want, I was kind of like, don't you fucking touch that, wait, like, relax, don't cut his boot, get the fuck away from me with those scissors, like, uh, do you yeah. remember that? That they were going to cut yeah, your shit yeah. off? I remember that. I also remember Shooter coming up to me. He basically had the same reaction as you. He was like, is this for real? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I went like, yes, it's fucking real. <laughs> I got real pissed. <laughs> but, so that, but then also, like, as far as, like, uh, feeling safe about a show was uh, the match. It, I mean, it's kind of famous at this point. It's got three million views on YouTube. It's me and Masada in, like, a death match. But I didn't ever feel, uh, I was nervous going out. And he never made me feel unsafe. Say what you want about Masada. I think he's phenomenal. He took tremendous care of me. Like, you can look at the match and you can be like, oh, this and this. He took tremendous care of me. He was so thankful to me afterwards. Like, I really won his respect over in that match and the way I worked <laughs> with him. He took care of me. But there's times and things are about to happen, like when the skewers are in my head or he's coming at me with a scythe. I was like... This could go wrong. This could be real bad. But he is an absolute pro and he took care of me. But that that's probably my other moment, to be honest. Yeah, I only have the broken ankle one. Like, I remember being a little, like, um, a little nervous my first couple of matches back. Because I was like, oh, what if I snap it again right away? Yeah. <laughs> but that was the thing, because I came back, like, at the shortcut, right? At the, yeah. the Royal Rumble type thing. But then the next day, I immediately had to wrestle for 20 minutes. Yeah. So... <laughs> And then, like, as soon as I had done the 20 minutes, I was like, all right, no worries. You know, like, I was over it at, at that point. Oh, wait. Oh, Kelly just reminded me of one. Uh, I completely forgot because it was so long ago. Uh, the, actually, uh, the biggest one was when uh, – and it wasn't so much – so the reason I forgot this one because it wasn't so much in the ring that I was scared because I was like, oh, she'll be fine. It was after, afterwards when stuff cooled down that I thought, okay, but when Kelly wrestled me here in America – and she popped her knee and her elbow out at the same time. Uh, <laughs> like, in the back, I was kind of like, oh, they're probably just sprained. I think she'll be okay. But as the night went on, like, I was petrified. Not only for her, but because she had opportunities coming up and the American healthcare system. So I was, like, <laughs> worried. And being in America and an independent, uh, it was like, no one's going to take care of us. Like, this is financially going to fall on us, which I get it. You're in the, you're in the business. You're going to have to deal with that. It sucks, but it is what it is. And the, the, in Virginia, you don't need, like, a vet insurance or anything like that. Or maybe the promoter didn't even get us the proper licensing because he was kind of notorious for that at the time. But, uh, but I was, like, real fucking petrified, not only for her, but, like, financially. And I didn't want her to miss her opportunities. I felt so bad because she was in the ring with me, and it was kind of a freak accident. Uh, but, yeah, that's definitely a big one as well. Thank you for reminding me of that, Kelly. And I feel like a dickhead that you had to remind me. But like, it's Yeah, but, like, you were, but you weren't petri petrified in the ring, which is what the question was. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what was the one that MoFo had uh, that I thought was really good? Uh, for, and this will be the last one. For both the one of saying you, I'm a cougar chaser? No, that's just fact. Uh, for uh, both of you guys, what's the funniest in-ring moment for you? Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know. That's the thing. Like, I fuck around so much in the ring. Yeah. It's like... One immediately came to mind for me, and it involves you for sure. Okay. Uh, now it's two. I think they all kind of involve you. Uh, <laughs> so we were wrestling. There was a series of house shows or town shows where they were doing tag tournaments. <laughs> 
and it was yeah. Wayne Yearn in the first round against like Avalanche and Ilya Dragunov, like the two nights. Oh ago. no, it was us in the finals of the first night. So it was us versus those two, and like we we're just no. Doing... That that was the finals of the first night was Avalanche and TKO, as he was known at that time. Now known as yes, Hector. yeah. So Ilya wasn't till the next night. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for correcting me on that. But, no worries. So you are doing this back and forth with Avalanche, and we're <laughs> and, and town shows. We're a little bit different as the crown. We're a little bit more like a daisical. We're trying to get everybody behind it, that kind of stuff. We're we're not as serious and as cold blooded as maybe the the bigger shows because we're again different kind of experience. You're paying. Uh, uh, we're trying to give a different value for the dollar, I guess you could say. And we're yeah, you work you work more for like the local crowd there instead of like the the tape product, right? Yeah. So you're going back and forth, and at one point I think you say like, "Oh, look, you're so fat." The Avalanche, and Avalanche yeah, yeah, just yeah. looks at you and bless his heart, tremendous wrestler. Uh, English is his second language, but <laughs> and also just coming off the fly, he just didn't have that wit at that moment. But Avalanche just looks at you and he just goes, "I'm not fat, I'm gifted." <laughs> and you literally turn and look at me, and I bury my head in the turnbuckle. I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I, like, I, looked at, I looked at you, and I looked back at Avalanche, and I just, like, really quietly went, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't, I couldn't, like, stop laughing. I buried my head in the turnbuckle, and then someone else ringside was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I couldn't stop. And I was like, dear Lord. Now, like, even to this day, sometimes me and Yearn, and this isn't for you guys to joke with them with, you know, this is a kind of inside story with the boys or whatever. So don't go to Avalanche and start saying this because that's just fucking rude. No, yeah, 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 it's just weird. But uh, like me and Yearn will just be like, man, just fucking, dude, Avalanche is so gifted. Yeah. <laughs> and look, look, at, look at Homeboy over there, so yeah. gifted. Like. But to be fair, me and Yearn have said so many douchey things over the years that he, they, he has just as much right to like say shit about us as well. Yeah. The th- the th- like, but like speaking of like funny moments and stuff in the ring, I like, <laughs> I remember at one point like I was teaming like there's so many dude like this is yeah. so hard. But I remember at one point like I have, I have a couple like when I was uh, teaming with Star, right? So there's one time where like Star was getting like it was me and him versus uh, Tim and Junior, and then like he's getting like this fucking massive heat put on him. And I got to get that hot tag. So, like, I'm working that the entire time. I was like, come on. Come on, Dave. Oh, yeah. That. And then at one point, I look over to him. I go, come on, tag me. And then I said his real name. <laughs> and then, like, he just, like, fully, like, stopped selling and, like, looked at me, like, <laughs> staring daggers at me. went, like, that's not my name. <laughs> and I went, like, oh, whoops. <laughs> Dude, do you know how many times I've done that to him, too? <laughs> There's so many people have done that to him. But now it's to the point that, like, the last time that happened, it was like they were wrestling in some, like, tournament. And I was putting boots to him. And I was just like, get up. And his name, get up, his name. Yeah. And then he just looked up at me. He's like, AJ, not my name. And I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I also had one of them, like, he and I teamed against uh, Walter and Tim, right? The ring comp thing at, like, uh, the tag league final. Yeah. At one point there that was super funny was like so with the way that we had set up the match like i would pair off with tim and then dave and uh, walter would pair up because it's because dave and walter very much much more so than me and tim love running spots uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay so that one point like me and tim are down and we know like the final thing is like a clothesline so they do a clothesline so me and Tim start rolling to the middle of the ring because we were like, oh, it's our turn next, you know? And then, like, Walter goes to Tim, and he goes like, no, 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 there's more. And I just hear Tim from the other side of the ring. was like, what? There's more? <laughs> and then, like, he just, we both just roll back. But he was so fucking loud. And just like the genuine disbelief in his voice fucking killed me. Thankfully, like I was down on the I was down on the mat so I could just like roll on my tummy and just like laugh. But like... <laughs> So that was a good one. I have... Besides that, like like as like as AJ said earlier, like I like to fuck around like a lot with people in the ring. 
So there's also like one time like it's during tag league as well as me and me and Dave against A4 uh, Andy and Alani. So there's a certain point where like Alani and uh, Andy have to work on me a little bit, and Alani starts trying to do like all these like holds and starts to like kind of like I don't know like MMA grapple with me or some shit. So all of a sudden, like, I just come back and I double leg takedown. I go, like, you're trying to shoot on me, motherfucker? <laughs> and I, I did that to you as yeah, well. Yeah, you did. You did it to me at the tattoo convention because I was doing a shoot gator roll into a pin. You're like, you're yeah. shooting on me, motherfucker? And, like, when I was pinning you, I buried my face in the mat because I couldn't fucking breathe. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then Alani, like, wriggled his way out and tagged Andy. And he's like, oh, he's too strong. <laughs> but then, uh, I remember, like, I fucked, the, I fucked a lot, like, with Walter in the ring. I thought it was going to be super easy to break. I thought it was going to be, I fucked a lot, hard stop. <laughs> I fucked a lot, too. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, Walter's always super easy to break. Um, there's been a couple of times where, like, where he hasn't broke because he doesn't get the reference I'm putting out there. And I think those are almost even funnier because his deadpan reaction is funnier. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time, like it was me and Walter against uh, Andy and Alani once again. And Walter, like there's a spot where like Walter breaks up Andy's sharpshooter on me by power bombing Alani onto Andy. Oof. Yeah. And then like I crawl over to him for the tag. And like, as I crawl over, I go, Walter, I broke my back <laughs> and I just look at him he's just like got the like most like emotionless face in the world he goes huh <laughs> just tag <laughs> I was just like thank you Walter <laughs> so I just tag and then later like it was a singles match like me and him against each other and we get like to this point where like I'm on the top turnbuckle and he fucking Ric Flair throws me off or whatever yeah, and then like as soon as, as I'm on the top, and he comes comes up to me, I go like, "Walter, don't try it. I have the high ground." And he just goes like, "Huh?" And, like he never gets it. And then he just tosses me off. Yo, but then like, it, there was one time where me and Walter, this is like, this is actually probably like the one I've laughed at the most, because and this is just like the entire show. I don't remember what the town was. But if you ask Shooter about this, he will definitely uh, remember. Yeah. But it was just like initially, like it was me and Walter in a singles. Then the ring comp did a run in. Then we had a six man, me, Kim Ray, and Absolute Andy against the ring comp. So Walter Jr. and uh, Tim. So three on two. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kim Sorry. was that way. So, uh, but um, so the thing was like. We spent like a like Walter was like the big time agent at the time, right? So uh, like where he was helping people put together matches. So he was so busy the entire time. He and I barely called a match, and we had to go fifteen minutes, which I love because it makes it gives you so much room for improv. So he and I would just brawl uh, on the outside, and then like at one point, like he's he's up on me and he beats me down. He goes move. I was like, what? <laughs> So he comes running in, he does this jumping elbow drop, and I move, he just eats shit on the floor. Yeah. And, they, and they had, like, these rugs there or some shit. So he got, like, a serious mat burn. He was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, then, like, we kept going. But we did, like, a yay boo, right? And, oh, yeah, yeah, we did the yay boo before. But so, so. The, day, the day before, uh, Walter had dared me to get a rock and roll chant started in the match. Which That's I did where that do. fucking came from. Yeah, so, and then, like, during this singles, we did a yay boo, and yeah, at like, one point I got up there, and then at uh, one point, all right, everybody, rock and roll, and every, like, that crowd was fucking awesome, like, they went for everything, and they all started chanting rock and roll, and then, like, I was just still on the turbo, and I turned around, and I looked straight at Walter, and he's just corpsing so fucking hard, like, he's holding back his laughter, like, his... Face is all scrunched up, and, you know, and then like he literally just says like I can't fucking take it anymore, and he goes <laughs> out of the ring and he starts laughing, <laughs> and then like when he's out of the ring, he's like because it's like it's the powder right, so he's running away, so I go like oh everybody look at this guy pussy pussy <laughs> so the, the crowd starts chanting pussy and he looks at me just throws up his arms he's like what the fuck. <laughs> 
So then, like, we do the match, we have the run-in, and, like, as we have the running, Ring Kampf is beating me down, including Tim. And as Tim is beating me down, <laughs> I went, like, oh, my God, Tim, how dare you? I thought we were friends. And Tim was, like, oh, we are, don't worry. <laughs> I just kept going. Oh. <laughs> and then, like, we did the six-man, and then Andy had arranged for me to come out to I Love Rock and Roll by Britney Spears. So that was a tragedy. Tragedy. Uh, and then we came. There was so much bullshit in this six man. It was awesome. That... So um, we got rock and roll chants started to a point where people started chanting rock and roll out of themselves. And then at one point, Tim has Andy in like a fucking chin lock, right? And they were talking about this like before, like during the day. How I think it was like Carl Gotch had like an altercation with Steven Seagal. And then Steven Seagal was like, yeah, I know how to get out of your holes, dude. I just, <sighs> you know, and Carl Gotch put a sleeper on him. And then like Steven Seagal tried to chop his dick, but it didn't do anything. So he just choked him out. <laughs> so Andy, Andy, is fire, Andy, Andy is firing up. As Andy's firing up, I started a USA chant. <laughs> and from which point Junior from the other side of the ring is yelling at me, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> And Andy is dead, like, dead staring me right in the eyes as he's chopping the inner thigh of Tim <laughs> as he's in this hold. And Tim just brings him back down. People continue to chant USA. And Tim goes like, who the fuck are you chanting for? I'm the only American here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That is insane. Yaren, can you hear me? Son of a bitch. Lost Yaren again. Hold on. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you now. What was the last thing you heard me say? I, at the end of the, the story where uh, Yaren or Tim is like, I'm the only American here. Oh, okay, okay. So afterwards, after that, because there's more to it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> after that, we have like a big schmoz, right? And I have to give like Tim like a big vertical suplex. Now, this was the end of the tour, right? And, like, Junior after this was going to go to America. Tim was going to go back to America. So this is the last match. That, and we had done a bunch of, like, these tag matches with Ring Kampf that were super fun. Yeah, I remember. Um, but this was the last one. And, like, the entire tour, to fuck with Junior, I had told, like, whenever me and Tim would pair up, I had told him, like, oh, Tim, like, when I give you this, you got to, like, give me the flare flop, dude. Like, you got to give me that flare front bump. Because Junior hates it. He hates that bump. So, <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, Tim, you got to do that for me, bro. And Tim was like, yeah, no worries. And Junior was like, no, Tim, you can't do that. It's dumb. It doesn't fit you. You know, like, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, so at one point, like, we're calling the six man. I give him the vertical. It's the only thing I give Tim the entire match. I was like, hey, Tim, do me a solid. Give me the flare bump there. And he's like, yeah, I got you. And Junior's just looking at me. He's not even reacting anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's just looking at me. So we're in the match. I give Tim the fucking vertical suplex. And I go, boom. And like as I'm like getting up, I see Tim all of a sudden like up on his feet. And he takes the fucking flare flop. <laughs> boom. And I just hear Junior, no! <laughs> So yeah, I think that was oh. probably the funniest shit. <laughs> but just like that entire show combined, all you know, all these Tim ones and and a couple of the other ones remind me of like a, I've got a few more now that I had completely forgotten about. <laughs> like oh man, like I forgot about that Tim flare flop too, and that was great. And it reminds <laughs> me of my match with Tim. Like I've only worked Tim a handful of times, but I really like it because we never talk beforehand. We know what how it's going to be. We go out there, we do what we do, and it's yeah, I, I love that. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> in the middle of this match, he goes for the sleeper, and I block it, and I'm like holding on to it, and we're fighting back and forth for it. And Tim whispers in my ear. <laughs> think you're a funny guy now huh and i'm like oh tim's playing up his character and then i just stop and i'm like i'm the only one that can hear that yeah <laughs> i was like oh god and then i back him up into the corner and i say hey watch the kick and i just hear okay 
And I'm like, oh, thank God he's not going to fucking murder me. <laughs> like, I was so scared for a second. I was like, he's going to Tim, Tim is life. such a sweet. Tim is such a sweetheart. He wouldn't hurt anybody. Yeah. yeah. I remember it once being as well, like, with one of those Ring Kampf tag matches. Mm. Like, me and Tim would, like, brawl with each other and stuff. And then, like, he put a cravat on me on the outside. And then he kneed me, like, right in my fucking nose. Oh, so I went like, oh, Tim, God, my nose. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was still just like his like upper leg. Like, it wasn't his actual knee, yeah. right? And he's like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, right away. I was like, oh, Tim, you do care. Oh. Yeah. Wait, let's, not ruin the, let's not ruin Tim Thatcher's stigma too much because he is a dangerous motherfucker. Yeah, for sure. He but just, he just cares about me because yeah, I'm one of his best friends. Yeah, he just happens so. to like us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Julio says times. poor Junior. You uh, fuck with him so often, Yearn. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, I think he's doing all right. He's dude. making money. He'll be able to play. <laughs> But one of the other ones I thought of, because you talked about Walter, and, like, when you had broken your ankle and I went on a singles run and actually ended up having a run with Ilya for the title, yeah. uh, like, I lost to Ilya in Hamburg the next night. It was me and Andy versus Walter and Ilya in the main event. And I was like, okay, yeah. this is finally my four-way into the main events. And yeah. throughout the match, because, like, the match before me and – Ilya were throwing like he was chopping the shit at me I was four on him he was chopping the shit at me I was four like we were going pretty hard um, yeah and so when we're calling this match Ilya would jokingly be like every time there was something Ilya would be like okay chop 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 and I'm like no that's not chop 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 no that's not let's not do that uh and like I'm like just ignoring it at this point and then like yeah. at one point in the match Walter and Ilya double team me and Walter tags in Ilya and he's like come on and Walter has me up against the ropes, very obviously going for the double whip. And Ilya just runs in full force and chops the shit out of me. <laughs> and it, Walter just starts laughing. And he's like, Ilya, what are you doing? <laughs> and then Ilya is just like, <laughs> and then they do the spot. <laughs> and then like Ilya chops me again in the corner. And he's just like, <laughs> I was like, you're a dickhead. Do you, I think Ilya is hilarious. He is funny. Do you, do you remember that one time where like Ilya wanted to do the double Vader splash on you with Avalanche. Yes. Oh, I know like story both, about that both, both you and Avalanche were like, no, <laughs> we, we shouldn't do that. That's super dangerous. You look, like you'll just flop off. You could break your neck, like all this kind of shit. And I was just there on the side. I was like, you know what, Ilya? I think you should do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Ilya is convinced. Ilya is convinced yeah. and Avalanche is going, that's super dangerous. And I'm like, yeah, it's super <laughs> dangerous for me. Yeah. <laughs> and another great point in that match is that like you had to break up a pin on me. Yes, I was gonna sell and that you one. You fucking yeah. punched me right in the face. Yeah, yeah you punched funny. me right in my mouth. So like, <laughs> like you, you went over, and you, I don't, I think it was Ilya. It was you Ilya, went yeah. over, over him and cracked me right in the mouth. It's with your not. Forearm. It's not that I, I went, went over what him. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I went over him. It's I hit him in the back. And he was so sweaty, I immediately slipped right off. Oh, And okay. straight formed you right in the schnoz. And I just hear, what the, AJ, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> also in that match, because that was the same tag team, like, tournament weekend we were doing of town shows. Yeah. And what uh, happened, like, I remember night two, Ilya broke up something he wasn't supposed to. So we told him, like, hey, don't do that. That was the wrong spot, whatever. And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. Next night, he does it on purpose, and like I see the intent in yeah. his eyes, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, no. And he looks at me and smiles and runs over and full force knocks me off. I'm like, Ilya, and I just hear, because <laughs> he knows he did wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, awesome. What's the, these were the, some stories, my dude. That was, this was, I feel yeah. like this was a good first time. I think so, too. Uh so, you know what they say, you never forget your first time. Dude. Oh, man, I haven't forgot. Yep, no, I haven't. Uh, but, yeah, so this was a good time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Uh, I think we're going to do this on a pretty regular basis, either weekly or biweekly, depending how schedules work out. Uh, yeah. This isn't... Oh, like, yeah. Like, I, I need to talk to you about something after, after this uh, podcast. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so thank you guys for joining. Uh, this will be up for a little bit on the stream afterwards it's going to be taken down by tomorrow because we're going to bank them and eventually put them somewhere so uh you got a little bit of time to replay this otherwise you're gonna to have to catch the next one live uh thank you guys and have a good one yeah thank you very much